Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. Today's video, the Lego EV3 Gyro Boy. Hello everybody. This guy is really cool. It's one of the four core projects for EV3. We have the color sensor, we have the robot arm, we have the puppy, and then we have the cool Gyro Boy. This is a crowd favorite. I've asked all my students, what did you like better, the color sort of the robot arm or the gyro boy? Hands down, gyro boy, hands down, is the most favorite. I think it's because it uses all four sensors, all three motors, and it's just, they've never seen a balancing robot before. So this guy is really cool. If you want to see it, stay with me. He now Lego Robotics. Oh. Hey everybody, it's Mr. Hino here. Before we get to the video, a lot of you have asked, Mr. Hino, what is your robotics curriculum? And I have finally put it together in a Google Doc. So if you guys check the description, I have left you a link to the Teachers Pay Teachers link. I've set this up for $3. Um, so if you hit up the link, it's just $3 and it gives you everything that I do for my curriculum, all video links, all project links, I've tried to put everything there for you guys to see what I do for my curriculum. So if you want to check it out, go for it. It's in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, guys. So in this video, what I plan to do, like I always do, is show you where the cables go. Huge. Because there's seven cables going on, you're going to need to know where they go. Definitely some do's and don'ts um, about starting this up, about making sure that if, if, if it's falling over, just to make sure that everything's good with it. And then definitely show you what the colors do to make this guy move, okay? So let's go ahead and first start off with the cables. Okay, everybody, if you check the description, I have given you a Google Doc link for these uh, cable port uh, directions. So that way, if you want to print this out for your class, you don't have to keep you know, showing it on your screen or having to repeat it. You can just have your students go to the wall and maybe post this on the wall. So here we go. Let's go with your sensors first. Your color sensor is going to be in port one. Your gyro sensor is going to be in port two. Your touch sensor is going to be in port three. And your ultrasonic sensor is going to be in port four. Now let's take a look at the motors here because you might just need a visual on the motors. The two large motors right here that are controlling both wheels, just know that they're going to be on the side that they're on. So this motor right here is going to obviously be in, that is A, and then this one's going to be in D. So just know that the large motors are going to be plugged in to the A and D on whatever side they're on. And then your medium motor is obviously going to go into C. Okay, let's go over some do's and don'ts. Okay, so the number one do not is do not turn the robot on like with it laying down or any other position. We want to turn your robot on where it's standing up. And the reason for that is we need this gyro sensor to be at zero when, it, when the robot turns on or else your gyro sensor won't know where zero degrees is. Zero degrees is really important to let this guy balance, and so you have to turn it on as straight up as you can. And I will show you what happens if it's not that way and how to fix it. Okay, so here is what we wanna see, guys. When we go over to port view and we go to the gyro, We want to make sure that those numbers are not going up, 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 and like just increasingly either that or going down. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm moving this thing, so it's going to be a little off, but we just don't want to see the gyro numbers going up or down like really fast. If that's the case, the program will not work. Mr. Hino, what do we do if we see that? A couple of options. Um, 
I think you guys know that if you unplug your gyro sensor, it will reset it to zero. So let me just go ahead and show that to you. Let me unplug this right here. Leave it out for a couple of seconds just to give it a chance to reset. And then we just plug it back in. And that's what we wanna see. We wanna see zero degrees and the number is not moving. That's gonna give your Gyro Boy program the best chance of operating here. So again, if, it, if the numbers continue to do that, unplug your Gyro, plug it back in. Sometimes I tell my students, you know, you, you didn't turn it on correctly. Put it on its stand, turn it off, and then just turn it back on again. Um, but that could take a lot of time, so just unplugging the gyro would probably be the best idea. Okay guys, it's time to start this guy up. And it, uh, it kind of varies. It should take from maybe 10 seconds to maybe 30 seconds. You just have to make sure that nobody is messing with the table it's on. Usually I tell my students go to the floor because that way nobody can shake the floor unless you know, you, you're on a cardboard box or something. Okay, so let's go ahead and now and figure out what each of these colors, they have you put the different colors on the stand here for the different operations. So let's check that out. Oh, neat. So maybe if we start with the ultrasonic sensor. If I put something in front of his ultrasonic, he should move his arms. And let me go ahead and go through, if you're wondering what the colors do, uh, red always is stop. So if he is spinning or moving, red will get him to stop. Green is forward. Well, let's do that again. Let me hit red. Let's hit green. So there's the forward. And then we'll go ahead and stop him. And then the blue and the yellow basically get him to turn clockwise or counterclockwise. So blue is a clockwise spin. I'll let him do a full rotation. And let's go ahead and stop him. And yellow is a counterclockwise spin. So if you teach robotics and you have your students doing the gyro boy, I always have my students do some research on a segue. And they're, they're blown out of the water to see how many similarities the gyro boy and the segue have. Um, if you do your research, the segue they call their sensor a gyroscope, which my students kind of go, oh, that's, that's code for a gyro sensor. So they're really thrilled to know that, hey, we're using the same technology that a Segway would use. We've been doing this gyro boy for the longest time and we've never been able to figure out what does the touch sensor do. So if you've wondered what the touch sensor does, check this out. If I mess this, gyro boy up and it has the plus eyes right there all you do is put it back on its stand and if you press the touch sensor it will just reset the program and he's back up again we never figured that out until this year so the touch sensor just resets the program without having to go back onto the brick and continuing to, instead of going onto the brick and resetting it, we just hit that touch sensor. Pretty cool, huh?
Okay guys, so there you have it, the LEGO EV3 Gyro Boy. I would just say be very, very careful because I think most of you know the gyro sensor is a very fickle sensor. It's very uh, inconsistent. So you just make sure that that gyro is set to zero. Make sure the robot is turned on when it's standing up and it, that will give you the best chances of this program working, okay? So it's a, it's a really enjoyable project. My students love it. It's the one they seem to play around with the most, like robot arm and color sensor. It was like, yay, that was fun. Let's take it apart. But the gyro boy, they just seem to love to watch it balance. And sometimes we've actually had it do a sumo with other gyro boys. I don't know if that messes it up or not, but it's a really fun project. Hopefully you guys liked it. Okay, guys, I'm Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out. He's out. He's out. We got this. We got this. We got this, guys. Hey, guys, Mr. Hino here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love robotics, don't forget to check out these videos also because they're cool. Okay, guys, take care.